quickly to the word of God, very familiar passage of scripture, Acts the second chapter, verses one through four. Acts two, verses one through four, many of you all know it by heart. The Bible reads, and when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire, and it sat on upon each of them, and it sat upon each of them, and it sat upon each of them, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. The B clause of verse number three where I'm going to hinge my text around on today and do a little concentration where it reads and it sat upon each of them it sat upon each of them I want to preach a sermon on today that I believe is a timely word because God has something to say I want to preach a sermon titled God take a seat God take a seat. Look at your neighbor and say, I need God to take a seat. Well, this past Thursday at 11.53 p.m., the president of the United States tweeted the most racist and undignified statement that any president has ever said. He says, these thugs are dishonoring the memory of George Floyd and I won't let it happen. And then he goes on to say, when the looting starts, the shooting starts. Uh, yeah, this is the president of the United States. It bothers me because we have a president of the United States who has been impeached, still running the country. Uh -huh. It was such an improper term that Twitter stated that the president violated the Twitter rules about glorifying violence. Twitter had enough common sense to let the world know that we basically have an elected president who is trying to act like he is a king and sitting on the right hand of God. Sir, 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 you are definitely sitting on the right hand of a God but it is definitely not the true and the living God. I need everyone to understand that this word thug, it was subjected to the African Americans to replace the N word. Y'all ain't said nothing. Once again, that the word thug was the politically correct term back in the 60s and the 70s, amen, to turn it into the use it for the N word for African Americans. Americans. So the common usage of the word thug, it does not require that you be violent uh, or commit any type of crime of any sort. You simply just need to be one color of your skin, which is black African American. You can be a Harvard graduate with a master's degree. You can even become a lawyer. You can even be a judge on the Supreme Court and you can have the greatest platform and you can have the criminal history, no criminal history at all. But we are all labeled as a thug and or the N word. Uh -huh. I don't care how great you think you are. They still see us as a thug. They still see us as a N word. Let me park it here. Because I have a lot of great, wonderful, white, Caucasian friends that are close to me. Hey, Amen. But the census is we are still the minority. The census is we are still considered uh, the N-word. The census is we are still considered a thug. And you can even be the first black president of the United States, like President Obama. And you can still be labeled as a thug. For years, for years, we have seen an increase in the amount of attention paid to political correctness and most definitely cultural sensitivity. Also, a huge trend developed 
with respect to language and the choice usage of certain words. And those association of words also carry negative connotations that go much deeper than they appear at the surface. And I know the African American culture part of our dialect, we say the N word as uh, that's just part of your language. But I want you to know that they, it was never created for the way that we use it. So when you call your uh, African American brother or sister that N word without the ER but with an A at the end of it, when you say that in front of the white Caucasian people, they get a kick out of that because they are the ones that labeled you that. It's all right. Amen. So the African American community has fought so hard to get where we are right now, and we won't stop. I often say, Lady Bell often says that we the black people, we've got to work three times harder just to get by. I say to all my educated brothers and sisters, don't stop at just getting your bachelor's degree. Don't stop at just getting your master's. Matter of fact, you need to get a double master's. Matter of fact, go get your doctorate degree. Y'all ain't said nothing. Because at the end of the day, you can have all of these degrees. Amen. They still won't respect you because of your color. But they got to respect what you earn. Let me get one more thing off my chest. Let me get it off my chest. And if y'all delete me, y'all stop this live feed, I'm going to still preach it anyway. Uh, let me get one more thing off my chest to all of you that believe in white supremacy and you races that feel like you can treat this generation of black Americans like you heard about your, uh, your, through campfires and retreats with your family and those that also read, read uh, what your white forefathers did. Let Pastor J, matter of fact, I'm going to be J.J. Bell right now. Let me forewarn you. This generation and culture and the season we live in, what they did back in the 50s and the 60s and the 40s and the 30s calling you sir and calling you ma'am, I want to declare to you on today the same respect will be given to us. Mm -hmm. uh, let me help you. Uh -huh. I believe in protesting. Yeah, I do when it's done correctly. I do believe in protesting. Yeah, I do believe that we should believe in social justice. Uh, yeah, but the same things that you did to my parents and to my grandparents, this generation, we don't play that. Uh, let me also tell you, this generation will fight back. Uh, uh, one other thing, this generation, we will talk back. Uh -huh. and, and we are just as educated as you are. Mm -hmm. And you can't say anything in everything you feel like and think that you will get away with it. Try me if you want to. Uh, you can't say anything in everything to a great man and woman of God that's got the oil on their life. Um, and I want to declare to the African American community, community, stop allowing them to treat you like you are nothing. Stop allowing them to downplay you. Stop allowing them to say anything to you without having a Christian clap back. Come on here. Uh huh. I ain't telling y'all, ain't telling y'all to go out there and start fighting and whooping people no but when you are educated there should be something that comes out of your mouth through the Holy Ghost uh-huh don't let everybody treat you the same uh-huh because if you do it publicly you need to repent publicly black people we are tired and exhausted of oppression we are tired of being treated indifferently just because God loves us and has a special favor on our life but I'm here to declare to you today that you can keep fighting us you can keep degrading us and you can even keep calling us out of our name uh-huh and you can continue to not give us what is due to us that's cool that's okay but there is a scripture in the Bible that talks about individuals that want to keep oppression on us. 
The Bible reads in Exodus 1 and 12. The Bible says, but the more they afflicted them, the more they multiplied and grew. You didn't hear it. That was the word of God. The more that they afflicted them, the more they multiplied and grew. And the Bible goes on to say, and they were grieved because of the children of Israel. Uh, let me help you out. To all of you who feel like the African-American community ain't nothing and you feel like you can kill us at any given moment and you feel, uh, yeah, I don't want to hear it. I'm not going to pronounce the man's name and announce the man's name, but you know who he is. Yeah, if you looked at the police officer's uh, face when he had, his, uh, he had his knee on his neck, he was smirking. He had his knee on on his neck and he was laughing he got a kick out of it because they feel like they can treat us any type of way but i'm here to declare to you on today that the more you afflict us the more we multiply and the more we grow huh and the more you afflict us the more we grow the, come on here the more you call us a thug and the more you call us the n-word the more we grow. And to my black brothers and sisters that have dealt with unjust behaviors that were put on your life, I submit to you to just keep growing. Matter of fact, put that in the comment section. I'm just going to keep growing. Uh, let me help you all out. And to all of you all that feel like your vote don't matter, I sound like a civil rights activist on today, but that's okay. I'm still Pastor Jay. If you don't get to the polls in November, we'll have another impeached president back in office. This man done sat up here and called y'all a nigger. He done sat up here and called y'all a thug. He done sat up here and said you will never be nothing. He done sat up here and gave y'all $1,200 and you think that's some money. If you think $1,200 is some money, let me show you my bills. Yeah, twelve hundred dollars ain't no money. And then, hallelujah, if you look at the other countries, other country stimulus packages were from seven thousand to ten thousand dollars. And you got the nerve to give us twelve hundred dollars like you did something, man. If you don't go on somewhere and get somewhere and sit down, what we see in the text, calm down. Pastor J is that the people of God just came through a very tough. And a hurtful, unsure moment and an ordeal that they had to go through. 50 days prior to this, they killed, they just killed the king of kings. Uh, 50 days prior to this, they just killed the lord of lords. They hung him on the cross 50 days prior. Huh? They mocked him. 50 days prior, huh? They said his legacy would never be nothing 50 days prior. But Jesus came back and he talked to those that trusted and believed in him that I need you to wait just a little bit longer huh? because I have something for you. But to continue to do what you've been doing by praying, continue to fast up. And I just need you to wait a little bit longer. Yes, church, I agree that we are still untreated just. Uh, I, I agree that they still look at us as a slave mentality. And if you don't know what slave mentality is, I, I encourage you to watch a movie called Django. Uh huh. Quentin Tarantino is one of the greatest producers and writers that's in, in the world. Huh? He got it down packed. Uh huh. Yeah, they treated us like slaves. Huh? And that mentality is still in the world. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. They treated us improper and still treat us improper. Uh huh. Uh, and how often do we forget? That we are currently going through, what we're currently going through is actually a pattern in the course of history. We go through this all the time. This ain't nothing new. Y'all just ain't got it. Mm -hmm. Y'all think that oppression is going to go away. 
Honey, let me tell you, this has been going on for 4,000 plus years. It just is what it is. But what we got now that they didn't have back in the Old Testament is this thing called the Holy Ghost. Uh, uh, we got the Holy Ghost now and the Holy Ghost keeps us the Holy Ghost uh, is our guide uh, I'm going to talk a little bit more about that but they didn't have the Holy Ghost they had individuals that represented God come on uh -huh. but we got access to God y'all ain't saying nothing and yes I agree yes I agree we've been treated unjust yeah I also agree yeah, that we've been treated and degraded like slaves but remember how the Hebrews, having fled Egypt of the day of the Passover, they get to the banks of the Red Sea, and God tells them to wait right there. He commands them to set up camp while the Egyptians pursue them. And the Hebrews, like many of us, have no desire to wait. Maybe one of the issues is we are responding too quickly instead of waiting on God. Uh, to all of you protesters that are protesting now, which you are really not protesting, you're looting. <laughs> and, and looting equates uh, to stealing. Uh -huh. They have the right and the authority now uh -huh, to take you to jail. Amen. Do you know that there is this thing, church, called facial recognition? Yeah. And you think that facial recognition is not in the states? Man... And woman of God, you are totally incorrect. Facial recognition is on your iPhone. Uh, facial recognition is even on the Android. Uh, facial recognition is even uh, on those cameras, amen, those cameras that are on the streets. Uh -huh. If we really want to get you, we can. Uh -huh. You ain't going nowhere. You think that you causing pain to the people. No, you causing a criminal record for yourself. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, when they were back in the 70s, and I, I'm sure my mom doesn't mind me telling y'all, but mama, Mother Bell, was a Black Panther. Uh huh. Mama was a Black Panther. Uh -huh. Y'all think she nice and sweet? Yeah, she is. But mama was a Black Panther. They fought. For peace uh -huh. yeah you can fight for peace without throwing hands you can fight for peace uh, without going to jail come on here you can fight for peace for sometimes without opening up your mouth huh? there is a difference and let me help you all out for those of you that are spiritual you can fight for peace on your knees you can fight for peace uh, huh, when you praise the name of the Lord. Mm -hmm. You can fight for peace when you worship God. Huh? God wants to know, hallelujah, if I allow them to oppress you, what will you do? Instead of you looting, you need to be praising God. Huh? Instead of you stealing, you need to be worshiping God. Huh? I get it, I get it. I get it, church. Pentecost, it simply means or it equates to 50. It is not some big thing that y'all make out to be. Huh? Uh, you try to make it seem like it's some, uh, some theologically sound movement and you feel like I got to put the word Pentecost on my flyer. Ma'am, a woman, huh, uh, sir of God, let me help you all out. Pentecost simply means the number 50. Stop being deep. It just means 50. Somebody shout 50. So the key to the set of scriptures was that God is getting ready to give the people of God what he had promised. I'm going to go that again. God is getting ready to give the people of God what he has promised. God never broke his promise. God never broke his his promise. You just want it quicker. But God never broke his promise. He just needed them to wait until he was finished aligning some things in the spirit realm first. Yes, you heard me correctly. Before he sent the Holy Ghost, he needed to make sure that everything was in alignment in the spirit realm 
first. Let me help you out because when you get access to the Holy Ghost, you get access to the Spirit of God. When you get access to the Holy Ghost, uh, you get a different level of God in a different spirit realm. It is not on the bottom layer. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you're tapping in to something different now. And God says, I need to make sure that things are aligned in the spirit realm. Huh? So the text says that when everything was ready, that a sound came from heaven as a rushing mighty wind and it filled the house where they were the bible also says and i preached on last year about the cloven tongues uh, uh, and it fell like fire but today i want to talk about and it sat on them give me a moment y'all uh, uh, and it says Right. It's very important that we pay close attention to set on them. Huh. Yeah, we don't preach that part. Huh. We preach about cloven tongues as like fire. But we forget the part of set on them. Uh -huh. I just want you to look at somebody and say, I need God to take a seat. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. It's very important that we understand that set on them it goes like the Old Testament as when God rested. Mm -hmm. uh, so when God rests or sits, that means his assignment is complete. Come on, Pastor Jay. When God takes a seat and when he takes a rest, that means his assignment is complete. And when God rests and his assignment is complete, that means that his work has been done huh? that means that that assignment that he had planned on earth it is now finished so god slow down huh? god took a seat and he rested not because he was tired but because he was finished with that job uh -huh. Yeah, see, when y'all say it is finished, y'all think that the end of times is coming. Huh? Y'all think that uh, the, the horn, the trumpet is getting ready to sound. But just like we've got jobs to complete, God's got jobs that he got to complete. So God took a seat. He rested, not because he was tired, but because he was finished. That's why the phrase says his work he has done. His work he had done. He had is past tense. Uh, he had done. So that means that that particular assignment is complete. And something that we all need to know about God is that God, he is the God of Genesis. And God, he is the God of the Bible. And God, uh -huh, he is the true and living God. And he is bigger than you and me because he is a God of rest and I want you to know that God have, will take a seat when he's done mm -hmm. so when God takes a seat or he takes rest just know that he's complete with one of his God assignments and let me help you all out because I heard evangelist joy she said it while she was singing that his glory has now been revealed. Mm -hmm. You got to understand huh, that when God takes a rest uh, and that when God, he takes a seat, that means uh, that his assignment is complete. And when his assignment is complete, man, a woman of God, that means that he will reveal his glory. Huh. Uh, and I'm here to declare that today when God's glory is release uh, that is a sign that something in the spirit realm has been finished and accomplished and we are the recipients of what god has for us uh, lift up your hands uh, and say god reveal your glory mm. oh come on lift up your hands uh, and say god reveal your glory uh, First Lady Karen Clark Sheard, she got it right when she wrote the song 
that we acknowledge your presence. Uh, the lyrics go on to say, Holy Spirit, uh, you are welcome. Uh, this is the part that I like. Um, she says, come on in. Take a seat. Uh, inhabit our praise. Uh, God of Zion, uh, Judah's lion. Uh, and then she goes on to say, uh, we acknowledge uh, your presence, oh Lord. God, he takes a rest uh, and he gives us the power uh, that he gave his son. Uh, and the reason uh, that Pentecost Sunday, uh, it's important uh, is because uh, the prophetic that was released uh, about the power that we would receive uh, has officially uh, come to pass. Uh, God, God, he can now take a seat because it's here now for all of us to have access to. Yeah, you need to have the Holy Ghost power. You need to have the Holy Ghost power. Yeah, lift up your hands and say, Lord, reveal your power. Yeah, that's why the Bible says that God is not a man that he should lie neither the son of man uh, that he should repent uh, hath he said it and shall he not do it uh, or hath he spoken and shall he not make it good uh, yeah God wants you to have it uh, and if you not have it uh, if you don't have it uh, it's a possibility uh, that you're blocking uh, access uh, to the Holy Ghost uh, don't blame it on God don't blame it on Jesus uh, don't blame it on your mama uh, don't blame it on your daddy uh, don't blame it on old hurt uh, maybe it's you uh, that's blocking access uh, for you to get to the Holy Ghost uh, yeah uh, that's why the Bible uh, for those of you that study uh, it talks about many uh, many refillings uh, yeah I understand uh, when you get it the first time uh, but I want God uh, I want him to refill me uh, on a daily basis uh, because I need access uh, yeah I understand praise uh, yeah I understand worship uh, but the glory uh, I need access uh, to the Holy Ghost uh, I need access uh, to some power uh, that'll keep me right uh, I need access uh, that, to some power uh, that'll keep me whole uh, I need access to some power that'll keep me from fighting I need access uh, to some power that'll keep me uh, from going off uh, I need power lift up your hands and say power The Holy Spirit uh, or the Holy Ghost. Uh, I like that term better uh, because the Holy Ghost, uh, that's what the African American, uh, that's what we say uh, in the black church. Uh, yeah, uh, but the Holy Ghost, uh, it empowers uh, the church uh, for worldwide witness. Uh, preach John uh, and I will pray the Father. Uh, and he shall give you uh, another comforter uh, that he may abide uh, with you forever uh, even the spirit uh, of truth uh, whom the world uh, cannot receive uh, because it seeth not uh, neither knoweth him uh, but you know him uh, for he dwells uh, he dwells with you uh, and he shall be in you uh, I will uh, not leave you comfortless uh, I will come to you uh, yeah uh, the Holy Ghost uh, 
it wants free course. The Holy Ghost, it wants to lead you. The Holy Ghost, it wants to guide you. Yeah! Stop making your own moves. Yeah! Because you'll get yourself in a world of trouble. That's why God, he sent the Holy Ghost. Yeah! The Holy Ghost, it will give you its fruit. Yes, it will. The Holy Ghost, it'll give you its fruit. What are you talking about? Well, preach Paul. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, against such there is no law. The Holy Ghost, it'll make you love people that do you wrong. The Holy Ghost, it'll make you love the ones that keep putting a knife in your back. The Holy Ghost, I'll make you look at the ones who the devil is using to keep dogging your name, to keep talking about you, to make you love them. The Holy Ghost will make you not get mad. The Holy Ghost will make you dance in front of your enemies. The Holy Ghost will make you shout, yeah, yeah, I'll never forget glory to God. It was a sermon on a Wednesday night that co-pastor Lady Cece Bell she had on jeans and she had some Ugg boots on but she used a prop and say God will make your enemies your footstool yeah 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 Mikey, you're making me feel good. Yeah. You'll prepare a table in front of your enemies. Glory to God. You ain't got to fight that. But the Holy Ghost, it'll make you love. The Holy Ghost, it'll give you joy. Yeah. It'll give you joy. It'll give you peace. That's why the Bible says that he'll give you peace. Yeah, not just peace, but he'll give you perfect, perfect peace. If you keep your mind straight on him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you keep your mind stayed on them. That's what the Holy Ghost is for. The Holy Ghost will shield you. Come on. The Holy Ghost, it'll protect you. The Holy Ghost will hold you back. The Holy Ghost will cover your mouth. The Holy Ghost will tell you to dance instead of retaliating. The Holy Ghost will tell you I will bless the Lord at all times. At all times. Lift up your hands and say, Lord, show me more of your fruit. Say, Lord, show me more of your fruit. The Holy Ghost uh, testifies uh, of truth. Uh, the Holy Ghost, uh, it will teach you uh, all things. Uh, the Holy Ghost, uh, it'll reveal uh, Jesus uh, to you uh, and to me. Uh, yeah, yeah. Preach Paul, uh, but we speak the wisdom of God 
in a mystery even the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world unto our glory the Holy Ghost will show you the mysteries of God everybody they don't have access yeah there are some things in the spirit realm that the Holy Ghost wants you to sit down and learn the Holy Ghost will teach you all things yeah put yourself in position to learn all things put yourself in position for God to take you higher put yourself in position for God to birth the gift he wants to teach you but you keep running he wants to teach her, huh? but you keep running her huh? glory. Huh? He wants to teach her, huh? but you won't submit. He wants to teach her, huh? but you won't be obedient. Huh? He wants to teach her, huh? yeah, huh? but you gotta sit huh? and you gotta obey huh? what the Lord huh? through the Holy Ghost huh? is saying. Huh? Yeah, if you got the Holy Ghost, you don't church hop. If you got the Holy Ghost, you don't church hop. If you got the Holy Ghost, you'll be corrected without being offended. If you got the Holy Ghost, yeah. If you got the Holy Ghost, he'll teach you. He'll teach you how to keep your mouth closed. He'll show you when it's time for you to open up your mouth. But glory is a choice. It's a choice. You gotta use it. God ain't gonna force you to have access if you don't want it. But I thank God. I need access. I want access because I need God to keep me. You think it's about somebody else, but it's to keep me. You only, you want the Holy Ghost to show both. You want the Holy Ghost so you can show others that you know how to speak in tongues. You just made it up before you left the house. You got spring 2020 tongues. God ain't talking. The Holy Ghost has a language that we don't understand. Yeah, I hear what you're saying. He kind of emotion. But what if God is saying that ain't his language? What if God is saying, huh, that ain't how I talk, huh, but the Holy Ghost, huh, it'll teach you. Come on, huh. The Holy Ghost, huh, it'll teach you, huh. The Holy Ghost, huh, it'll show you huh, what not to say, huh. The Holy Ghost, huh, will talk to you, huh, while you're in church, huh, and it will show you, huh, somebody's spirit, huh, is off. The Holy Ghost, huh, will tell you uh, not to lift your hands right now uh, because the spirit is off. Uh, the Holy Ghost uh, will tell a pastor uh, that's got somebody up uh, at the mic uh, that is in his own flesh uh, to cut the mic off, uh, mute the mic. Uh, that's what the Holy Ghost. Glory. Uh, thank you, Jesus. Uh, the Holy Ghost. Uh, I'll make sure you're good. The Holy Ghost huh, will make sure you're good. The Holy Ghost, huh, it will encourage you huh, in the middle of the night. Huh. So God, take a seat. Yeah. God, take a seat. Yeah. The Holy Ghost, huh, it dwells huh, in believers. Huh, and 
filled them again and again. Shout glory. The Holy Ghost. I hear you, Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost. It'll give you spiritual gifts. The Holy Ghost will enhance your gift. Glory. Yeah. You want to preach so you can get a check. You want to prophesy so you can get attention. You are no help to the kingdom of God. But God wants to know, are you the vessel that he can use through the power of the Holy Ghost? Yeah! Yeah! Glory! Glory! The Holy Ghost is a seal in the lives of the believer. It'll seal you. It'll cover you. And once again, it'll make sure that you're good. The Holy Ghost, it will intercede on your behalf likewise i hear it minister davis likewise the spirit also it helps our infirmities for we know not what we should pray for as we all preach bible but the spirit itself it'll intercede for us with groanings which cannot be uttered and he that searches the heart know what is the mind of the spirit because he make an obsession for the saints according to the will of God the Holy Ghost will make you shout. The Holy Ghost, it'll make you dance. The Holy Ghost, it'll make you worship. The Holy Ghost can sense when you're depressed and tell you to lift up your hands. Lift up your hands. All ye gain, the Holy Ghost, it'll tell you to open up your mouth when you ain't having a good day. The Holy Ghost could tell you to open up your mouth and say who is the King of Glory, the Lord, strong and mighty. Lift up your hand, only gates, give him glory. Because he made a way, give him glory, because you're still here, give him glory, because he's turning things around, the Holy Ghost, it'll tell you to sing songs when you're going through, like no weapon formed against me shall prosper, yeah! No weapon through the Holy Ghost huh, that is formed against me. Huh, and if the weapon, if it strike me, huh, the Holy Ghost huh, will protect me. Huh, if the weapon, huh, if it strike me, huh, and I'm still here, huh, and it's uh, by the grace, uh, by the grace of God, huh, yeah! Stop phoning and get access. Stop complaining and get access. Stop tripping and get access. Yeah! I messed around and I'm in A flat now. I didn't need to go this high. But when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me 
That's why my soul. Lift up your hands, everybody, and say, God, thank you. Thank you for the Holy Ghost. Yeah. I serve a God that'll dance with me. I serve a God that'll shout with me. I serve a God that'll worship with me. I serve a God that will be there by my side. And you better give God. You better dance and give him glory. Listen. Come on, we're dancing. We're dancing even when we don't feel like it. We're dancing even when there's a lot going on in our life. But I heard the Lord. He told me to tell you. Can you dance in the Holy Ghost?
just heard the Holy Ghost. I heard him speak. And I heard God say, if y'all don't lift up your hands and receive this word, huh, hallelujah, that the gift on the inside of you huh, just got access huh, to the next level huh, in the spirit realm. Huh. You thought your issue was going to keep you bound. Huh. You thought your struggle huh, was going to keep you bound. Huh. But God says uh, that this praise uh, is giving you access uh, to the next layer. Uh, and if you want access, uh, you better dance or you better do something uh, because I need access uh, to the next dimension in the spirit realm. Come on, Tammy, dance! Dance, Tammy! You got access now! You got access now! Joy, you got access! Avis, you got access! Omari, you got access!
up your hands. God just told me to tell you that you're ready for the next level of ministry. Hallelujah. You understand what it is. God told me to tell you that you ain't crazy, nor are you weird. But God chose you at an early age because there's a word that needs to be released out of your belly. And I hear the Lord saying, David's gonna put your hand on her belly, that he's given you access to the next level of ministry. Preach, woman of God. Preach, woman of God. Preach, woman of God. Preach. And those of you all that are watching me, there's a level of ministry that God has signed to you. God said he's giving you access. God said he's giving you access. Preach the word. Preach the word. Uh, preach the word. All of the hurt that you have to endure is to preach the gospel. It hurt the one that loved you. It hurt. But God says you got access. You got access. Jessica, I know you don't feel the greatest, uh, but if you want access, uh, stand up and dance. Dance, Jessica. Come on, we'll dance with you. Yeah. Somebody on over there and help her out. Uh. Get your access. Uh. Glory to God. your passport you get it ready to see it don't say it from the man of God you've got access Alpha, everybody, come on, sing it with me. And Omega, come on, you know the song. We worship you, our Lord. You are worthy to be praised. Come on, can y'all stand with me? Come on, everybody, that's here. You are Alpha and Omega. We worship you, our Lord. You are worthy to be praised. You are Alpha and Omega. Go back to the top of that, Anthony. You are Alpha through all of your struggles and trials. And Omega, lift up your hands as a sign of obedience. Come on, you are Alpha and Omega. We worship, we worship you, our Lord. You are worthy to be praised. Everybody, come on, we give. We. Bye-bye. 
everybody. Come on, let's sing it. Come on, come on. 